Welcome back to Random Tasks and my Vespa N1S project. In case you missed the previous videos, I took a 2011 Vespa LX50 and converted it into an EV using the powertrain from a 2017 NIU or new N1S. In this video, I'll be doing a couple of upgrades as well as taking care of some snagging. So let's get stuck in. I've been riding it for a while and there's three things I need to get done. Um, number one, this brake lever sticks. See, it doesn't spring back, push it back, which means I'm going to have to take this off again and probably use my heat gun and just kind of bend it out a bit because when I've taken this off before and tested the brake lever, it springs back no problem. So clearly it's fouling here somewhere. Second thing, is it leans a bit when it's on the stand. And I think the solution is basically I'm gonna add another bolt on this side, just to cinch it down. And I think that'll solve that problem. So I'm gonna take the bracket off and drill another hole in it. And then the third thing isn't really a problem. It's more of an improvement in that I finally have my performance controller from eScoop parts, which I'm going to mount in here. So that's gonna be the last thing I do. But first I want to start taking the bracket off again. So I got the bracket off and I'm about to drill an extra hole which is basically into that pre-existing hole in the bracket um, or in the stand rather and I'm going to drill into my bracket there. Um, it's got to be 8 mil diameter and this is steel so this could take a little while. Okay I got the hole done. Also countersunk it a bit to match the other one. And I'm ready to put both bolts back in. And um, hopefully that'll make it less wobbly when it's on the stand. So I've got the bracket bolted back onto the new swing arm. But before I bolt it back up to the Vespa, I want to just do the controller. So I've already disconnected the old one. You can see the difference. So this is the old controller. This is the eScoop Parts performance controller. There's also this interface, which I have to connect. Now this should fit in roughly the same spot without a problem. Uh, instead of using zip ties this time, I will try to do something a little bit more permanent. But um, yeah, so let me get this connected and then figure out how to mount it. New controller is now mounted. Uh, I did end up using cable ties again, um, mainly because it is a bit of a tight fit, but um, hopefully this all works. In the future, I might end up moving the controller down to here. That was my original mounting spot for it, um, but I ended up just using this dead space here between the body and the frame. So bolt the motor back up and then I'm going to fire it up and see if it works. Okay, I got it plugged in now. And let's put this in first. You hit spin up, and the speedometer says 51 kilometers an hour. Second, also 51. That's not terrible. And then, oh, that high pitch noise is something I've never heard. It's indicating 89. Oh boy. See what that translates to into real world when my weight is on it, but that is a massive improvement. Okay, to tackle the brake lever problem, I've taken the handlebar cover off once again, and I can see quite clearly this is the problem. This little notch here is where the brake handle is rubbing as I pull it. So I'm gonna try to grind away at that and see if I can make that fit thinner and hopefully that'll solve the problem. So we got the handlebar cover back on, windshield, mirrors, everything, and the grinding or filing that I did on the cover worked because now the brake lever springs back like it should. I don't have to push it back with my hand anymore. Uh, so that is three for three in, thing, in terms of things I want to get done this weekend with the brake lever, stabilizing the Vespa on the uh, center stand by drilling that extra hole in the bracket, and installing the performance controller from eScoop Parts so that this thing can now get up to 40 plus miles an hour. I took it on a top speed run 
and I got up to 40 miles an hour on a flat, a little bit more going downhill. Um, and that was with a, let's say 70% battery. So the full battery should be a little bit better as well, but that is good enough in terms of the roads that I ride on in the London area. Um, I don't go on anything that has a higher than a 40 mile an hour speed limit anyway. So very happy with the outcome. Um, it's definitely a successful weekend of wrenching on the Vespa. So snagging and upgrades completed. So that'll do a comparison between the acceleration between my Vespa PX EV conversion and my Vespa LX50 uh, NIU and 1S conversion. So I'm using a um, this drag racer app for Android. And so these are results for the PX I went out earlier. So you can see zero to 30 kilometers an hour, which is roughly uh, 20 miles an hour. So um, 1.7 seconds, zero to 50, which is about 30 miles an hour, four and a half seconds. And zero to 60 kilometers an hour, which is nearly 40 miles an hour, 6.7. That beeping means that uh, it's ready to race, so to speak. So I'm now going to do a quick run on this and just check the acceleration figures, see how this performs. Okay, so I have the results of the acceleration test I just did with the Drag Racer app. So for the LX, I've got the 30, 7.8 seconds, 58 and a half, and 69.1. Um, Compare that to I think 1.7 seconds to 30 for the PX, uh, four and a half seconds to 50 for the, and uh, it was 6.7 to 60. Um, no, these are kilometer per hour figures, not miles an hour. So yeah, definitely not as quick um, as the PX, but it's quick enough. Uh, with the eScoop parts upgraded motherboard or controller, I can definitely. Um, get up to you know 40 miles an hour which is what I need to get up to in the London area um, you know private previously was limited to about 32 miles an hour and um, to be honest it's just not doesn't feel safe on some of these roads if you're limited by um, the computer you, you do need to accelerate beyond that at some certain points so um, yeah so I'm very happy with this also like to point out I've installed a Bozzetti side stand which is sitting on right now um, which makes it a heck of a lot easier because that center stand is still a bit too low, which means it, um, it's a bit too difficult to put up on the center stand at times. So it's nice to have the side stand as an option. So that'll complete this video. Um, thank you for watching as always, and we'll figure out what the next project's gonna be.